I'm the girl that refused to die. I am an optimist against the odd and firmly believe if you believe in something, anything is possible. So this is a little bit about my story. Two years ago, I was almost completely paralysed. I was dying. I was given only a few days to live. I was given the last rites. I only had a few days left on Earth. I couldn't move my arms or my legs. I could barely talk. My family had to feed me and wash me, and we were waiting for the worst. I decided to spend my last days on Earth attending the first TEDx Canberra. <laughs> I was unable to hold my head up. I only managed to stay for one half of a talk. My dad in the back row holding my head up so that I could see the talk. It was an amazing experience. I was wanting to give all I could to the TEDx so that I would leave the earth knowing that I had done something important. I had come along with a group of minds and I was inspiring others. This is me at my sickest. Um, my sister Jackie is giving me water. Uh, there's a towel around my head because I couldn't move my head. I couldn't hold it up. I was planning my funeral, which I was 16. It's not really a positive thing to be focusing on your funeral, but that's what I needed to do. I had to organise my will and I was waiting for the end. So how did I end up this way? Well, it all started with my mother. When she was a teenager, she travelled to Japan and unfortunately was bitten by a tick there and got Lyme disease. Lyme disease is a horrible bacterial infection that can go into any cell in your body, causing multiple different problems. From one hand, it can be seen as severe arthritis in people as young as 12, or it can cause neurological problems like brain damage and multiple sclerosis and MS. I was very sick from a young age because my mum did not know she had Lyme disease. So when she gave birth to me, it passed through the placenta and I was infected with it. Because of this, I was very sick from a young age. We now know the Lyme disease caused brain damage, which is very hard to gather, to get over in my head. I had epilepsy, I had chronic fatigue, I had severe learning difficulties. I was unable to read till I was 11. Unfortunately for me, I got it twice. When I was about 12 years old in 2008, I went on a youth camp in Sydney and got bitten by a tick there and got the Australian strain of Lyme disease. Within a few months, I was struggling to walk. There was something wrong, but I couldn't pin, my, pin it down. I was struggling to walk upstairs. I couldn't go from one end of the house to the other without having to sit down. I travelled to America to get treatment and within a few weeks I was in a wheelchair. Within a few months I was completely paralysed. So what? Well, I was lucky enough to get treatment, having anti antibiotics pumped through me in an IV line that saved my life. Daily IVs have meant that I have not only lived to this day, but I have thrived and survived. My parents taught me that life is what you make of it. So this is what I've done. I decided that my experience would benefit others, that I had gone through so much, though so that others didn't have to. I joined the Youth Advisory Council that uh, helps policy issues to the government. I organised a disability forum so that other people with disabilities could access and tell their story to the government so that they could better have services to them. I decided to follow my real passion in life, ceramics. Even when I was paralysed, I had clay in my hands. Even though I couldn't move my hands, the opportunity of creativity was there. 
I decided that even though I was sick, I would go to school and get a formal. Because when you're in a wheelchair, that's what you really look forward to, a pretty dress and shoes. <laughs> With the help of the Dixon College teachers, even though I didn't manage to go to most of my classes, I was still able to engage with the school and the rest of my classmates. I decided that, hell of it, if I was going to be on this earth for as little as time as most people, <coughs> I was going to bloody well make the best of it. So I decided to travel overseas. I even went to New Zealand and Finland. When I was in New Zealand, I proved that even though the worst circumstances may happen, I spent most, a lot of my holidays ducking into hospitals, but this didn't stop me from going to Hobbiton and dragging my, my lovely dad, dragged me up the hill to Bag End in my wheelchair, which just shows that if you have a dream and a passion, you will make it happen no matter what. The important thing is to remember that anything is possible. I was lucky enough that Make-A-Wish sent me to Finland to see the Northern Lights. Now, most people would think that if you're in a wheelchair and have daily IVs, going to the Arctic Circle isn't the best idea. But I proved them wrong. <laughs> you have no idea how liberating it is not to be in a chair and to be in a dog sled. Because it was so cold, um, my disease is better in the cold, I was able to walk for the first time in so many years. I was able to be dragged in a sleigh, because wheelchairs don't work that well in the snow, by my father, who attached ropes to the sleigh and pulled me Shackleton style, <laughs> making sure I would go ice fishing with the rest of them. I managed to get my driver's license, a huge achievement. I may not be able to get my wheelchair out of the car, but I can sure as hell drive myself there. This was huge, as I didn't think I was well enough to push the pedals. But with help from my family and driving instructors, I was able to achieve my goal of getting my driver's license like the rest of my peers. Now, for lots of girl guides, one of the biggest things you can do is complete your Queen's Guide. My Queen's Guide ended up being 20,000 words which is incredibly hard for anyone, but particularly for me, because I have brain damage from yellow Lyme disease, which meant I have very bad memory and I cannot write things down or read properly. So my 20,000 words was spoken orally and then typed out by my leaders and by my mum. Even though I would be sitting there up in bed with an oxygen, oxygen concentrator and an IV running, I was determined that that Queen's Guide would get finished by my 18th birthday, and it did. I am so proud of the fact that I have completed it. I think what you need to know is that no matter how bad life gets, anything is possible. I'm going to go to uni next year, I'm going to go to university and study what I love, ceramics. I'm going to be a potter. It's not an if or a when, it is a, it will happen. These goals I have set myself are not targets because they will be met. I am hoping that in the next few months, I will be able to spend more time out of my wheelchair walking that I have in the past. So. Sometimes life may suck. It may get you down. There may not seem like another way. But it's what you make of it that counts. Thank you.